Good people, I'm Dmitri. Building a computer can be an incredibly, blah, blah, blah. building a PC can be an incredibly rewarding experience. If you boot just fine, you don't have any hardware compatibility issues or just hardware dead on arrival issues in general, cable management is easy, but let's be real, okay? If anything, astronaut training has taught us is that being prepared for the worst is the better way to go in terms of ease of mind and knowing how to solve certain issues. So in this video, let's talk about our worst parts of building a computer and how to solve them. Most of them. That is because the current situation with stock is just incredibly volatile. I'm not sure if that's the right word. Maybe frustrating is a better term to explain the stock situation. But when it comes to prices, whatever is available is just insanely high because both scalpers and retailers are taking advantage of the whole demand supply. So yes, the prices are definitely in that extra, 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 extra premium state. Don't have the time to wait for parts and build your own gaming PC? NZXT Build has your back. Navigate through their simple UI, choose the games you want to play, pick a budget that works, and the configurator will do its magic by offering some options built just for you. Or choose from one of their awesome pre-built setups. Want something more custom? Go crazy building your own dream PC from the ground up. All of these are backed with a two-year all-in-one warranty on parts, labor, and RAM overclocking. Save your time and start gaming right away with NZXT Build. Check Check it out down below. So first, let's start with the little things. My gosh, the front panel connector. Because there are numerous small connectors and they're a pain in the butt to wire, they're flimsy pins, and small writing makes it easy to get wrong. It's actually the very first thing I cable manage because accessing the front I.O. port on the motherboard is most likely not very accessible with a GPU installed. A solution to this would be to remember how the cables are lying on the motherboard, which is the same on every motherboard, luckily. So power reset, use a flashlight, go carefully, and don't swap the reset and power uh, switches because that will give you hours of headaches trying to understand why the computer is not starting if you're clicking the power button. Some motherboards used to include the front panel Q connector like on ASUS motherboards, but I haven't seen it recently, which makes me worried. But luckily there is maybe hope from the case side because on my Cooler Master NR200, the front IO cables are bunched together in this plastic housing, which makes installation so much easier. Displaying all your hardware boxes. Okay, we've all done it on our first build, on our second build. I mean, <laughs> I still have so many boxes around here because, you know, it's a kind of a cool thing to display your coolest hardware, but Let's be honest, okay, it's a privilege to be able to display so much boxes because they occupy a lot of space. A solution to this is to use the case box, populate all the hardware boxes inside of it for the build. So if you have to access like some sticker for your memory, you can go back into the case box, use the case box for all your storage. Which leads me to the following. There are plenty of quality life improvements that we've seen roll out over the years in terms of case design, in terms of cooler design but they still have not been standardized. For example, frame cutout around the PCI slots for easier mount and removal of GPU screws is not on all cases. This makes it unnecessary difficult securing a GPU even with a screwdriver. SATA cables, why are they always so flat and stiff? I hate routing these cables because they're not easy to bend and always clutter your limited space. If you've ever had to remove the nine pin USB 3 cable from your motherboard, why does it feel like it's a one-time use cable that's been glued into the connector? Also cases that have moved into a single USB 3 port for the case IO, yet still use that chunky cable. I hate it when I remove the front panel of a case only to find the IO attached to that front panel. Move the IO to the frame to simplify installation. Some cases don't even have easy removable front panels for dust cleaning, accessing the fans, like my Corsair 680X. I love the case for water cooling, but my gosh, every time I need to uh, clean the dust filter, there's some screws in the back of the front panel that I cannot access because of my hardline tubing, so I'm kind of stuck. Some cases only rely on magnets for side panel mounts like the Razer Tomahawk ITX. So even the slight bulge of cables will not allow the panel to stay flush against the frame. Now a double-sided Velcro might help here if you have the space. Captive thumb screw mounts are so user-friendly, yet most of the removable or modular elements on the case that are attached with thumb screws like side panels, hard drive cages, SSD brackets might not actually have a captive thumb screw mount. I don't understand why releasing the PCIe lock slot mechanism 
mechanism can be so frustrating sometimes, especially when you have a massive CPU heatsink, a thick GPU backplate, and there's no way you can access that uh, clip with your finger. A thin screwdriver will always help, but in some instances, it's still very difficult. And maybe a new design has to happen on the motherboard that allows you to lock and unlock the GPU PCI slot without needing to go all the way to the bottom of it. If you want to install fans above the radiator, for some reason, maybe you want a pull configuration, all I'm gonna say is good luck. It's just so tricky trying to align the first few screws from the top passing through the fan and into a dangling radiator. Placing the case on the side might make things a bit easier. And of course, removable fan brackets are a luxury in this scenario. You would be surprised how many issues I encounter with case screws. And that can be it's like its own category of issues. For example, really tight screws on cases. Thumb screws in particular on PCI covers and side panels are always super tight out of the fact so loosen all the needed thumb screws with a screwdriver before assembly. Unless, of course, you want to do a finger workout. But good luck, my friend. The two screws on my Meshify 2 case for the top fan bracket are so tight, I cannot even remove them. It's extremely frustrating, but luckily not very common. I don't understand how we still do not have standardized screws for motherboard standoffs. Sometimes it's the fine thread, it's the thicker thread than others, and I always have to check before inserting the motherboard just to avoid any headaches. Most cases and cooling hardware come with non-reusable bags for all your screws and accessories, which can be a real pain for organization for first time builders. I love these organizers that help to separate all your screws, especially the ones included with Fantex cases. And you can also pick up these like the large ones from Amazon, which are going to be extremely helpful and will save you hours in the long term, like building computers over and over definitely recommend it. We're still on topic of screws. Let's talk about M.2 screws. First of all, they're super tiny and easy to lose with a small head. They're hard to line up properly because of the ultra small threading. And most of the time they're not pre-installed into the socket. So you gotta fish them out out of the motherboard accessory pouch. A solution here would be to use a magnetic screwdriver a magnetic tray and just don't lose that screw and keep that in the socket. Even if you remove the M.2 drive, just so you don't have to find the screw later. Moving on to cable management. This used to be my least favorite part of building a computer for years. I despised it because I didn't know how to handle it, partially because the zip ties that come included with the case are none or too few to do a proper job for cable management. Plus it took me years to get the cable management job done right, not just from a flatness perspective, but from a visual perspective too. I'm still happy with the cable management guide I did over here, check it out for tips. But it can be overwhelming really fast for many novice users, especially when those zip tie mounts are available on the enclosure. Rubber grommets have gotten a lot better, but they still pop out and waste your time as you put them back in their place. I don't have much beef with the 24 pin cable, but the 8-pin CPU connector that is always cut in half and sometimes without a way to lock two parts together, making installation in a crammed corner extremely frustrating as you try to bend your fingers in ways you did not know was possible. A tip here for new power supplies is take that 8-pin cable and bend it at that exact location where it's going to be exiting from the top because if it isn't, you're gonna have a hard time trying to bend it inside the enclosure. So do that outside the enclosure for both the 24-pin and the 8-pin. Next up, we have motherboard heat sinks that make it hard to work with M.2 slots. With more and more motherboards having heat sinks, actually getting to those M.2 slots is just a complete pain. Azrock is a prime offender here because they use tiny Torx head screws for the heat sinks. And sure, they give you a screwdriver in the box, but if you lose that, better hope you have the iFixit toolkit ready. Links down below. Other motherboard vendors use standard Phillips heads, but only a few actually use the captive screws so they don't run all over the place. Power supplies with flat cables. Contrary to the marketing, they're not easier to route. They're actually very hard to manage since they're so stiff. And I find it so much easier to work with standard braided cables and try to avoid flat ones. One of the solutions is to replace the cables by extensions or carefully part the rubber on the flat cable so it's not flat, it's more bunched up. If your building is small, like an SFF ITX enclosure and need an SFX power supply, make sure the SFX power supply comes with appropriate cables for an ITX machine. Because many SFX power supplies actually come with standard ATX length cables, which can be incredibly frustrating to route when it comes to like an ITX case. Now sure, this gives users flexibility for cases like the O11 Mini that has an SFX or SFX L power supply in the back, and you still need a lot of length for cables uh, for standard ATX enclosure. 
but do your research to check what length of the cables are included with the case. And there's always cable mod to give you ITX length specific cables. And they're not just extensions, they can replace the entire cable set for your power supply. Moving on to heat sinks and coolers with ridiculous installation processes. Why? One big offender here is Zalman. Check out the video to just see how hilariously bad the installation process is and what a nightmare it was for Mike and Eber. Some heat sinks and coolers have such a bad installation process and how can it be after decades? Can they not learn to make a user-friendly multi-socket compatible mount? You know, just look at Noctua. That's a perfect example on how it should be done or like for all-in-one coolers, Asetek design, super easy and simple to swap out between AMD and Intel brackets and just everything is so easy. There are so many example of cases that hinder your user experience and the assembly process rather than guiding you and making sure you have a good time. This mostly falls on those unique cases that try to do something different, but completely fail to deliver a user-friendly experience. Cases like the Aza cast, where you build a system inside this interior frame that you then have to transfer into this exterior shell that locks any access behind the motherboard tray. So swapping out a single cable behind the motherboard tray would require you to remove that entire interior frame redo your kill management and only put that back in, screw everything back together, and that's just not the right approach. The ASUS Z11 is a unique beast of a case, but the ITX motherboard IO is on the interior, so plugging in the USBs or anything into your GPU is just a complete nightmare. Instead of reaching to the back of the motherboard on a traditional case, you have to remove four panels, route everything, make sure you pass the cables through the bottom panel and through the frame, and especially access to that GPU is just, woo, it's so difficult. It is why I gravitate to cases like the Corsair 4000D or the Meshify 2, aside from the little hiccup with the screws on the top panel because the overall user experience is so satisfying. Zero stress, no hassle, no frustration. It's done and you're happy with yourself. You're welcome. And the last one, installing Windows from a USB drive has become incredibly easy, but this is the one I use all the time, and I've made this mistake multiple times where I do not download the latest installation media from Microsoft. Therefore, when I install Windows, connect to the internet, it's hours of updating Windows, updating drivers for Windows, not the motherboard stuff, and it's constant restart, blah, 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 blah. So make sure to download the latest installation media from Microsoft so you don't have to wait for Windows to update. You walk. I'm sure there are plenty more annoyances when it comes to PC building. Share yours down below. Let's uh, have a chat. I'm Dimitri. Thanks very much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.